How do you maximize performance with your sales force? My name is Anthony Garcia, and I'm the host of the Catapulting Commissions podcast. Join me every week as we discuss topics such as performance or improving retention. And we do so by interviewing some of the top sales professionals and entrepreneurs around the world. Now, let's enjoy the show. All right, Catapulting Commissions family, I am so excited to have you back with me this week. I have a special guest. Now, for those of you that have been following my content, whether it's on the podcast, Facebook, social media, et cetera, uh, on various occasions, I have mentioned that I have a, an executive branding coach that helps, that has helped and I'm say, to take the brand from its infancy to what you see and know today. Let me tell you a little bit about Elise Archer. She's a founding team member and personal brand strategist with Brand Builders Group, whose insights have been featured in major media, including Forbes and Inc. She is a keynote speaker and host of the podcast, Instant Impact with Elise Archer, where she shares best practices from top business leaders who have created extraordinary personal brands and world-class networks. Now, prior to joining the founding team of Brand Builders Group, Elise served as a partner in an eight-figure international sales coaching organization where she helped sales professionals achieve their goals. With a degree in journalism from UNC Chapel Hill and over 10 years' experience in the digital marketing industry, Elise leverages her backgrounds to help people position themselves as thought leaders in their space. Her client list includes New York Times bestselling authors, top 100 podcast hosts, and eight-figure entrepreneurs, as well as leaders who are early in their journey and committed to scaling their influence, impact, and income. Now, Elise is an expert in visibility, personal brand strategy, and how to master video for businesses. She helps people understand how to become known as a visible leader in their industry in order to multiply their inbound opportunities, impact, and income. And today, I'm proud and honored to introduce my coach, my friend, Elise Archer. Welcome to the Catapulting Commission Show. Anthony, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, it's so good to be here with you today. And you know, as you were reading that intro, it, uh, it reminded me, like, I just, I love working with you as a client now. It reminded me that I, I tried to recruit you as a client back when I was doing the uh, sales coaching thing. And you were like, you're like, no, I'm good. Like I, which you, you were, cause you kind of had that thing figured out <laughs> as we see with your brand, but it's been so cool that, uh, that we've gotten to work together the past over a year now. Oh, and um, and just see what you've done with your brand and just how fast you've had success and grown. So I am just so excited to be here today and really, really looking forward to uh, wherever the conversation goes. I know it's going to be great. Fantastic, Elise. And yeah, that was, it was uh, almost a year and a half, two years ago where we uh, first connected on, on a sales coaching opportunity. Things didn't work out, but we did stay connected, which is something I always talk about, right? It's never a question of, it's not a question of no, but it's the opportunity wasn't right at that time and further opportunities developed. So I'm really, really thankful for the content you post and share, which kept me engaged and helped bring the Catapulting Commission's brand to life. So yeah, love it. with that being said, Elise, let's talk about that previous job first, just for a second. So you recently exited your role as a partner in an eight-figure international business specialized in sales coaching. After you exited, what did you learn? Oh, man, that's a big question. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's crazy. It's been about two years now, and it's so fun how time flies. You know, I think there, there was a lot that I learned through that experience. Um, my, at the time, my whole identity was tied up in what I was doing. And I couldn't envision myself doing anything other than sales coaching and training. And I was living really my dream life, you know, making great money, had an amazing team that I was leading, had an incredible, you know, hundreds of clients who I was working with, I was speaking um, all over the country, like life was really good. And I didn't think that anything, I couldn't imagine having a different future. And there were some sudden changes in the company and I had an unexpected exit and it was Honestly, Anthony, probably one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life because I went from feeling totally confident in my future, what I was going to be known for, the impact I was making in the world, to suddenly feeling like overnight everything had changed. I lost my income. I lost my clients. I lost my brand. All of it just gone. And so it's a really weird paradigm to uh, to be. And I think for anybody who has exited a company or even just with 
you know, recent things going on in the economy. Maybe they lost their job and they're at that point where suddenly they're having to reinvent themselves. It can be a little bit of a, like, it was like a come to Jesus moment for me. And, you know, I spent, I spent a couple of weeks kind of, I, I'm not going to say wallowing in self-pity. That's probably going to be a little bit more extreme than it was, but I spent a couple of weeks, like really mourning the loss of, of what I thought um, my future was going to be. And, and more than just the loss of relationships from that. But what it forced me to do is it forced me to really get creative about what my brand was going to be about, what I was going to be known for. If I couldn't be known for sales coaching anymore, what was I going to be known for? And that was a scary thing to start thinking about because that was so my comfort zone. And I started thinking about anything else that I was passionate about, like personal development, or you mentioned some of the things in my bio, like visibility, just helping people step up into greater confidence. And I started having, like, I thought, I, I guess I could be known for those things, but I had so much doubt show up of who am I to be qualified to talk about that? And why would anybody listen to me? And so one of the biggest things that I learned through that whole process was that if you feel called, if you have a message, something that you personally have been through, or something that uh, is a challenge you've overcome, something you're passionate about, it's there for a reason. And each of us who feels called to be more visible and build a personal brand, just like you've done in, you know, in the sales space too, it's happening for a reason. And sometimes I think we doubt ourselves and we say, who am I to be the carrier of this message? And who am I to build a reputation around this? And it's crazy because you mentioned, you know, some of the people that we work with at Brand Builders Group, there's, there's some of the top personal brands in the world and being behind the scenes with them, you hear that same self-doubt still show up sometimes of, is anyone really going to want to hear this? Hasn't it been said before? But I think about it, I think each of us can think this for, you know, the leaders that we look to in our industry and in our space. Um, they weren't the first one usually to say what they're saying or to build a reputation around what they're saying. Like if people you know, in the sales space said, well, Grant Cardone's already said it, then, and you're, it's like, if you think about the other people who you may be following, like all of your listeners who listen to you showing up and giving your value and giving your wisdom and insights, what if you decided that he'd already said it? So you were just going to throw in the towel and not do it, right? There's people who need to hear it from you specifically. And so for each of us, there's a group of people who they need to hear the message, the strategy, whatever it is that you feel called to share, they need to hear it from you specifically. Uh, we did a great interview for a summit a while back with uh, Les and Ona Brown. Ona is uh, Les's daughter, Dr. Ona Brown, and they, they train a lot of speakers. You know, Les Brown is one of the top motivational speakers in the world. Most people in sales probably know him, but they train a lot of speakers. And what they said is, like there are people who have your name written on their heart. They need to hear it from you. And so that's been just one of the biggest learning experiences and mindset shifts for me is that it's not really about me. If I'm feeling called to bring this message forth, it's because there's somebody out there who needs to hear it and they need to hear it from me. So lots of lessons uh, packed in there, but that was one of the big ones for sure. Oh my goodness. This is so much value in what you just said. And no, you are, it is okay to say that you dealt with an adverse opportunity. And you know, there is that moment of, I don't know what I'm going to do next. And I don't know, you know, what happened. I've lost my identity for, for a lack of better words. Right. But then you, you pivoted in a hard pivot, right? You went, you, you created and you joined the, or a founding member of the brand builders group. And some of these personal brands you've, you've mentioned or you've developed or you've worked with, you haven't mentioned them. And, and, you know, we can, we can uh, tackle that throughout the interview today. As people find that they're a personal brand themselves, one of the biggest challenges is why me? Like what makes me special? Why am I the one to do this? And, you, and so you talked about, you know, because someone else has said it doesn't mean you can't say it again, which is true. Right. But there is that, that fear, that that doubt, that no one's going to know who I am and why should somebody care about what I have to say? What would you say to somebody who's contemplating that personal branding in their life for their business or for what they do, but is still struggling with, why would someone care what I have to say? Mm, great question. I think there's a couple of things. I think one is, you know, you're, like we talked about at the beginning, like if, if you're feeling called to bring a message forth, there's somebody who needs to hear it. And the follow-up or the addition to that would be one of the best ways you can build a personal brand is by having some sort of a unique angle 
on whatever the topic is that you're teaching. And so when you start to ask yourself, why me? First of all, I think everyone today has a personal brand. Everyone should be building a personal brand, whether you're working for a corporation or not, because that's really, that's what you have. At the end of the day, your personal brand is just your reputation. It's what you're known for for. Now, one of the challenges when building a personal brand, though, can be noise. And so sometimes I think when we're wondering why me, what we're really asking is, gosh, there's so much noise out there. How am I going to rise above? How am I going to get my voice heard? How am I going to kind of cut through it? One of the best ways that you can do it, there's a great Larry Winget quote. He says, the key is to find your uniqueness and exploit it in the service of others. So find your uniqueness and exploit it in the service of others. Today, it's not so much how are you better than the next person or the last person. You know, there's always going to be somebody who's better than you, more experienced at you than what you do. And there's always going to be plenty of people who aren't as good as you as well. So it's not so much that. It's more how are you different? How are you unique? And so what you can really do is start to look at the topic that you want to build a brand around, build a reputation around, and look at what could be my unique angle on this. And you're wanting to build a brand around it for a reason, right? It's something that's on your heart. Maybe you have a personal background working in it, or it's something you're passionate about, or your career is in this space. And it's like, hey, it would really help me grow my sales, grow my business, if I could be speaking on more stages about this or have a podcast about this. But what you want to start to look at is your own unique angle on the topic. And it can be a number of different things. It can be your personal background. So are there challenges that you've overcome uh, related to your topic? Is there something that we would call your superpower, something that comes really naturally to you that other people think is hard. Um, A couple of examples in my own brand, like one of the things that I talk about um, publicly, which I used to be scared to talk about, but it's part of my uniqueness and it's part of how I think I can help people is I'm really passionate about helping people overcome insecurities as they step up and become more visible because I struggled with them for so many years. And I struggled from my teens through my twenties with an eating disorder and really like bad body image issues. And so for anybody who struggles, maybe not to that extreme, but who struggles with, oh my my gosh, what are people going to think of me? And what's going to happen when I put myself out? Like, I've been through that. I've worked through it. So that's part of my own unique angle now on helping people. And most of my clients haven't had that same path, but I get it. I've been there. Um, another thing, like the video piece, what I teach, you know, for me, I would say that's one of my superpowers. It's, it's easy. It's natural. It's fun for me, but I work with a lot of clients where it's not the same. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people where it's not easy. It feels uncomfortable. It feels awkward. So it's really about looking at what's your own unique background, superpower, experience that you can apply to the topic. And if you're not sure, you know, ask your friends, get some people who know you to say like, Hey, what's the, when you think about me, what are the words that describe me? What are some of the things that you think are my superpowers? Maybe like, I just don't know that it's something I do well or do naturally. Um, What are some of the biggest challenges that you've seen me overcome in that outside perspective? A lot of times we take for granted the stuff that seems so natural to us. We're so close to it, we just don't see it. So when you get that outside perspective, you can really start to see your unique angle come to light on whatever topic it is that you want to speak about and build a brand around. I like that. So you have this identity, right? That That is you. You are your story, right? And your story is impactful. Your story is powerful. So you, you mentioned everyone should have a personal brand to some form and extent. Now, at least one of the questions that that I've been asked and at being being a client of, of yours and being a client of brand builders and is, okay, so you're building this personal brand, then what, right? How, how do you monetize this, right? I mean, you know, do I become a, you know, a multimillionaire by selling, you know, a $24 book on Amazon? Or what's my path, right? And so, how does somebody take that personal brand they're developing and monetize it, followed by why should any sales professional find value in their personal brand separate from the company brand they represent? Mm, love these questions. Okay. So for the first question, you know, for a lot of your listeners, they are they probably already work for an organization. And maybe they're in sales leadership or maybe they're in sales for a company. You've got your built-in monetization right there. 
<laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's really, it's the more well-known you become in your space, in your field, your, your built-in monetization is there. You're going to get more customers for what you do. And this could probably be a whole nother podcast where we could talk about the fear amongst sales leadership of their team, building personal brands and going on and leaving them. And I think there's, to me, that's scarcity mindset. Really, you want your people to be well-known. You want your people to be branded. It's kind of like saying, what if I train my sales team and they leave? Well, what if you don't and they stay? It's the same type of thing. So there is a lot of benefit today for a sales professional or a sales leader to be building their brand in their space. Because when you think about just the customer journey and how people shop and how people buy today, they're doing the majority of their research online before they reach out. And so you think about what are they, what are they searching? What are the keywords they're typing in? What are they looking for? And are you coming up or is somebody else coming up? And by building a personal brand in your industry, maybe you're putting out thought leadership videos on LinkedIn. Maybe you've got a YouTube channel that's dedicated to just short, simple how-tos and tutorials. It doesn't have to be fancy, but what you want to do is you want to be the one who's found when your ideal customers are searching for what you do so that when they're ready to buy, they're going to want to reach out to you. The other component of that is that people follow people way more than they follow companies. And I know this is this is a big mindset shift because for whoever's listening, especially if they're in leadership, they've probably been really focused on the company brand and that is important. But at the end of the day, think about when you personally are scrolling social media, what makes you stop the scroll? Is it a logo of a company or is it an image of a human face? We connect with humans. And so it's really critical as sales leaders to be thinking about how to empower your team to build a personal brand. And then as a sales professional, I know sometimes you have varying degrees of wiggle room and bandwidth with what you can and can't do depending on company policies. But even when I was back in digital marketing sales years and years ago, I sold, you know, pay-per-click advertising and SEO before people knew what SEO was. Um, I was working on building a personal brand for myself in that space because I was marketing all these small and medium-sized businesses online and helping them be visible for the search terms they wanted to show up for. And I started thinking like, why am I doing this for them? And then for me, I'm just doing a bunch of cold calling. And when people search me online, they don't find anything. You know, it was, it was, it was like, why don't I just do the same thing for myself that I can generate more inbound leads and be more successful? Hey, I wanted to take a quick minute and interrupt this episode for a second. I hope you're enjoying what you've heard thus far. Are you a sales professional or do you manage a team of sales professionals? I imagine you know someone who struggles with complacency. I'm talking about the sales rep who has all the tools to be a top performer, but just can't seem to get past the mental hurdle that is holding them back. I completely understand and I relate with you. That is why I've created a detailed approach on how to get out of this stage of complacency and put yourself in position to achieve your next sales goal. Be sure to visit my website, catapultingcommissions.com. Once there, you can find the link to pick up a copy of my international best-selling book, Catapulting Commissions. Now, let's get back to our show. So to the other part of the question about monetizing the brand, um, if you don't, if you're not planning on building your personal brand around your sales career or around what you're selling, there's a number of different ways that you can monetize your personal brand. And we call them the PAIDs, P-A-I-D-S. Um, you know this, Anthony, as a client, we love a good acronym at Brand Builders Group, so pretty much everything is an acronym. Um, but we look at the five ways that you can get paid for your information, for your expertise as a personal brand. So uh, they're products, ads, and affiliates. So think about kind of like building a big network and then people will pay to get in front of that network. Uh, information, so that could be a membership site, that could be a course, brand deals. So you build your brand to a certain point and you get paid to do a TV show, write a book, et cetera. And then finally services, which would be more of the time for money. That's usually where most personal brands start. Think about that, like coaching, consulting, speaking, training. It's great because there's very little barrier to entry. You don't need inventory. You don't need to uh, you know, get a warehouse or anything like that. And it can also be challenging over time because for most of us at some point we don't want to be trading time for money so in the long run a lot of people will look at hey how can i leverage my brand and create some more passive quote unquote passive because nothing's really passive but create more passive revenue streams off of my brand but in the short term if you're just looking to get started out and you've got a skill set i mean you can start coaching tomorrow you can start training tomorrow so um those are the different ways to be to be thinking about it 
Absolutely. I mean, I love I love the paints. And uh, I guess brand builders has plenty of acronyms, but it makes things simple, right? Finding that first source of revenue from your personal brand was probably one of the most challenging things for me because, uh, like I said, you know, I, I I do work for a large corporation. I do have uh, a source of income that that pays very well. And I was like, okay, well, how do I add an additional revenue stream, right? I mean, I've I believed in multiple revenue streams my entire life, and so going through that. Uh, becoming, you know, this expert or this product expert or, or, or knowledge expert, which, you know, it took a conversation, a couple conversations with you, at least say, okay, you know, I've done multiple years in different sales industries, multiple different accolades. And it's, it's funny, the amount of information that, that I have forgotten in my personal sales experience is more than sometimes what I'm teaching people. And so I, I have found myself that, okay, there is so much wealth of knowledge from what from what we discovered about my personal brand and working with you that, uh, you know, people do pay for that information and there are ways to monetize that, which, which brings me to something we first spoke about. And, and I think this was in, in our, one of our original calls, you, you, you talked to me about a, a concept called Sheehan's wall. And I have ran with this concept of Sheehan's wall and I've, I've used it in, in training my own sales team and, and, and kind of using Sheehan Wall and building their credibility within their respective industry. Can you talk to us a little bit about what Sheehan's Wall is and, and, uh, and how we apply that in our business? Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that I think, you know, we're up against without even realizing it a lot of the time. So it's a really important concept. So the idea behind Sheehan's Wall, it's a concept we created, but it's, it's named after a uh, consultant named Peter Sheehan, who studies businesses and brands that rise to the top of their class and says, what is it that the ones who become really well-known and influential and successful do differently than everybody else? And what we did is we took his research and then modeled it for personal brands because it's really the same thing. And so what Sheehan's wall is, Anthony, is in every industry, the way you can think about it is there's, there's kind of two different groups of people. And you've got this invisible wall that divides the two different groups. One of the groups on one side of the wall is the well-known. So they're the leaders in the industry. They're the ones that you see writing the books, podcasts, speaking on stages, having easy, you know, it's like easy inbound opportunities coming to them consistently because of their reputation and what they've done. And then on the other side, you've got people who are more unknown. And this could be they're just starting out. This could be that they haven't been clear about building their reputation. I mean, you even see this down to a company level where you've got some people to think about even in a big company where it's like, there's some people who you see on the award stage every single year and they're getting the awards. They're the ones who are well-known. And then you've got this other group of people who aren't as well-known who are kind of sitting in the audience clapping for them. Same type of thing. So the dynamic and the concept behind this is on the side of the unknown, people want to break through. They see the opportunity on the other side. They say, gosh, if I could just be better known, if I could have a stronger reputation, I could be making more money. I could be making a greater impact. Um, I could have more opportunities. So they see the opportunity on the other side, but the challenge is most people aren't clear on what the strategy is to break through the wall. So they come at it from all different angles. And in the personal branding space, this can look like, especially when you're first starting out, you know, not being clear on what your message or your topic is going to be. So you talk about all this different stuff or you, um, you go, you speak on 10 different topics or you launch a podcast and it's like a general kind of lifestyle podcast, but you don't have a brand name yet. So no one's really listening. You know, it can look like the types of opportunities that you say yes to. So anything that comes your way, you're like, yes, I'll try it. I'll just do it. Um, it can look like your social media strategy. You're not clear on it. So, you know, you're going to do, you're going to go all in on Instagram and then you do that for a couple months and you don't really get the results you were looking for. You think, okay, you know, maybe I should switch it up and switch to YouTube. So what ends up happening is you're coming at the wall from all these different angles and for your video watchers, I'm like doing a really not good visual of this, but <laughs> you're coming at the wall from all these different angles. And what ends up happening is what we call brand dilution. So there's never anything that's clear enough or focused enough to start to pick up and be memorable. The people who do break through the wall, it's a much smaller group of people. And this is where the challenge comes in because it does require some focus and discipline. Uh, the people who break through the wall are the ones who say, look, I know I could be talking about all these different things, doing all these different things, saying yes to every single opportunity that comes my way. But they say, you know what, I'm going to focus in on becoming known for one thing. 
and they go all in on that. And so these efforts that were spread so thin and diluted suddenly get really focused. And it's literally just a matter of time with enough consistency, clarity, and velocity that you build up that strength and that power to bust through the wall. And then once you're on the other side, everything changes, everything opens up for you. It's it's no longer you reaching out to introduce yourself, you reaching out to um, try to you know have the conversation with someone or get the opportunity. It's inbound. People are coming to you. Opportunities are coming to you because of who you are. I think about examples like um, like Gary Vaynerchuk. A lot of your listeners probably like Gary V. You know, for years before he was Gary V, he was doing Wine Library TV. And he focused in on that for years. And a lot of us forget that. Now that he's on the other side and he's quote unquote Gary V, he can talk about business, family, relationships, motivation, New York Jets, launch a sneaker line, and it's successful because he is him. Um, you mentioned at the beginning too, like we work with some high level clients, Lewis House is one of our clients that a lot of people may listen to in the podcasting space. And for years before he had built such a big brand, he was the LinkedIn guy. He taught people how to network on LinkedIn and he went all in on that and did that for years, got enough momentum going, broke through the wall. And now he can, you know, interview Tony Robbins on his jet and he can have a successful podcast event, um, brand deals because he is Lewis Howes. And I think this is one of the biggest disservices to people and one of the biggest um, misconceptions about building your brand is you look to the people you want to emulate and you say, well, they're talking about everything. So clearly that's the way to do it. And the key is it's not because you didn't see them before they broke through the wall. You didn't see them. You know, I was listening to Gary V um, do a live a couple of weeks ago, and he said, "Look, for years, when I was first doing my my videos and my trainings, I would have like five to seven people hop on, and none of us saw that. We see him now with thousands of people joining live and following him, but we didn't see the before. So, if you're on the more unknown side of the wall, it's okay. Everyone starts there, and what's going to help you break through faster is figuring out what the uniqueness is of your brand, what your focus is, building your reputation on one key thing, and then expanding from there. I love that. I mean, that that transition, right, from the unknown to known, is it, you know, as someone who's going through it right now, right, it is it is it is not easy. There's a lot of times that you get into these these mental obstacles, and and you mentioned focus, which is funny. I, I know we've had coaching calls where you tell me to focus, but once you break through and you get to the other side of that wall, the ability to really be a thought leader on anything is so valuable. And I'm I'm gonna spin that here for our listeners real quick. What Elise is talking about, if you work for a company, right, and I know I've told this to the sales team that I manage. It is not your job to tell your prospect or your customer about the hundred different product options they have. You want to be known for solving one problem for your industry, and you want to be known as the expert in that space. And then once you're on the other side of that wall, you can get there. Now, in working for a corporation, it's you know sometimes penetrating that wall is a little easier. You get some credibility because you have a big Fortune 500 company or you have a reputation from that, that company. But in the terms of a personal brand, breaking through that wall it, it, it somewhat get sometimes it gets frustrating. It gets challenging, right? Because you're always you're you're trying to get there, and it's not easy. Um, and I, let me rephrase that. I don't want to say that it's not easy. It's it doesn't happen as fast as we like it, right? We're in this in this age of instant gratification, and so I know on my on my office wall, I have a, a quote that says "Chop wood, carry water," and it comes from going through Sheehan's wall. That if I just chop wood, carry water with a specific strategy. Uh, I'll, I'll end up on that other side. So when you coach somebody and, and you're having this conversation of, hey, we're going to break you through on the other side of Sheehan's wall. Is there a timetable you tell someone, hey, here's how long it'll take you? Like, is, is, is it something timing? Is it something social media growth? Like, when does someone know they arrive to the other side? Yeah, love this question. It, well, it depends on what wall you're breaking through. So there's always another wall. There's always another wall. And for, for each of your listeners, they have probably broken through certain walls in their career if they focused it all on their brand. And, and so there, the thing is, though, there's always this next level. It's kind of like once you're a big fish in a, in a small pond, you see this next bigger pond that you want to break through. And it really depends on how many people are already there. Uh, you know, I work, with, I, I work with a lot of financial advisors and insurance agents and for them because so few people have been really gung-ho about doing social media and video it's like for the ones who just do it now 
it's a relatively simple process because there's so there's not a lot of competition. <laughs> now, if you're trying to break into, you know, more of the motivational personal development space where people have been building online brands for years, yeah, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. So part of it is just looking at who's already out there and, and kind of like, what's the pond that I'm trying, that I'm jumping into? What's the wall I'm trying to break through? But here's how you know, is it shifts from feeling like a push to a pull. So you will know that you're starting to make progress breaking through the wall when you're getting opportunities and people coming to you who say, maybe it's like, hey, I've been listening to your podcast for a while. You've really changed my life. I'd love to talk with you about coming and speaking to our organization or, you know, how do I buy your book um, or how do I work with you? You know, I've, I've been watching your LinkedIn videos um, on, you know, X, Y, Z. Like I've been watching your LinkedIn videos on uh, financial services space and we're looking to hire a financial advisor. How do I do that? How do I get in touch with you? So you'll know because people are coming to you and then you'll reach a point of saturation. It'll kind of probably feel like a trickle at the beginning. Then it'll reach a point of saturation where it's like, oh my gosh, this has really exploded. I've got to hire a team. I've got to get people involved to help with this. And that's when you know it's time to work on the next wall or, you know, get some infrastructure in place, solidify what you've got and, and just rock it out. Um, but that is how you know. That is great. And then and, and fun fact, I, I believe I originally got connected with you through LinkedIn videos, which was, you know, I, and I've, I have said multiple times, I thank you for sharing that content. Sometimes, you know, we don't realize there's someone who is engaging in our content, who is listening, who are inspiring and motivating, right? And so it's, it's really sometimes that, that power of one. But, you know, you mentioned earlier, Gary Vee was doing calls for five or seven people. And I know that when, you know, if I create a post and it doesn't have a lot of likes and the next one has tons of likes, I'm like, is the, is the content different? Is the message different? And it is, you know, who am I trying to serve? If I'm trying to serve my ego, then yeah, I want likes and, and shares. And, but if I'm trying to serve my 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 ideal person and i'm trying to be in a position of service then those videos uh come really natural and come really easy yeah what, one quick thing because i this it actually came up on a uh, on a group coaching call i was leading today for my video students and i just i think it's so important what you just said and so i just want to speak to it really quick um there's a number of people in that group who have recently started putting out videos and they're like I'm getting a lot of views. Like I'm, I'm actually, they're getting a lot of views and they're either not getting a lot of comments and engagement or the views are kind of all over the place. And they're like, what's going on? What's, what's wrong? And how do I get more people to comment and engage and reach out to me? And this is what I reminded them. I've got to remind myself of it. And, and I think it's each of us has to remember this. Think about all the people you follow online where you love their stuff and you never comment. Now, maybe you are the one in 20 <laughs> who's actually really diligent about commenting on everything or liking, but how many times do you stop, you watch a video or it's on in the background while you're doing something, you're like, that was really good. And then you go and you tell somebody about it later in the day. You're like, I got this really great idea from Anthony today and I'm going to implement it. But they never once took the time to comment on your video or like it. I do that all the time. So it's a good reminder for me that I need to be more engaged on other people's content because sometimes we're just going so fast. But all those people who are watching it, even if they're not watching all the way through, that's an impression. That's a branding impression in their minds. And that's what so much of this is about is them building a relationship with you. You don't know online who's building a relationship with you. Every time you put something out, but I promise you, if you do it consistently and you don't give up because you're frustrated that you're not getting the engagement or the, the, the comments that you were hoping for, when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to work with someone who does what you do, they're going to reach out to you. So it's what you said. It's never underestimate the power of one. And remember that most of your people aren't going to take the time to tell you they appreciate your stuff. That's just how it goes. I'm so glad you said that because that is one, I think I, I'm glad I heard that because I need to hear that myself. But two, I know there's someone listening or watching that needs to hear that as well. All right, Catapulting Commission's family, that's going to do it for our time today. You just listened to Elise Archer on the Catapulting Commission show. Now, this interview with Elise is part one of a two part interview series. So you definitely want to ensure to connect and subscribe so you get notified when our next episode drops next week. Elise shared so much valuable information on building a personal brand and monetizing a personal brand, which really is a game changer. And if you didn't take good notes, I would highly recommend rewind, go back, listen, get the notes, 
take advantage of what Elise has to offer, what Elise has to share. Her contact information and, and all the appropriate links are in the show notes to be sure to get connected with her. Now, here's why you want to subscribe to next week's episode. Everybody wants to get into video and everybody wants to have a video presence. And Elise is going to tell you how, but not only how, but more importantly, why. If you're a sales professional or a sales entrepreneur, you should be utilizing video. And Elise is going to walk you through that. She's also going to give you the keys. The number one mistake that people make when trying to push out content, we're going to go ahead and pick and dive into that next week with Elise as well. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Anthony Garcia. Be sure to click subscribe and I'll talk with you soon. Well, that does it for today's episode on Catapulting Commissions with Anthony Garcia. If you found some value in today's show, please be sure to head over to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. Don't forget to subscribe to Catapulting Commissions. That way you get notified of new episodes every week. Lastly, please take a screenshot of today's show and share it on Instagram. Every week, I'll be giving away a signed copy of my best-selling book to one person who tags me at Anthony P. Garcia 99 and includes the hashtag catapulting commissions. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to helping you achieve higher commissions.